Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Got another beautiful day here in Denver. Um, no clouds in the sky, so I'm out here doing a video for you guys. Um, in this video, I want to give my personal testimony on how I became a Christian and explain uh, briefly, you know, why I make these videos. So, um, before I begin, I want to swear myself in on the record here. I got the King James Bible right here, so I got my hand on it. You know, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. So here we go. Um, now, I don't want to tell my whole history. I'm not going to get into my whole life history. That's not what this video is about. So I'll just say this, you know, I was raised Roman Catholic, okay? Um, coming up from a Hispanic background, uh, most of my family, if not all of my family is Catholic, they're uh, raised Catholic, that's just what we've been. And so my parents, you know, they baptized me as a baby and I got confirmed in the Catholic Church. And when I was a teenager, and for the most part, I accepted what I was taught, you know, I accepted um, the Catholic Church doctrine and I, and I accepted the whole thing. You know, I had no uh, complaints really. I mean, not any more than the, than the next guy, right? Um, but you know, for the most part, I accepted what I was taught. It, it was it was tradition. It was it was uh, the religion that was passed down to me um, from my father and and his father and and you know our forefathers and things like that. And so that's what I practiced. That's what I learned. Now I, I wouldn't consider myself a great Catholic, you know, I, I, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I would I would have told you that I was about average, maybe maybe slightly. Um, more spiritual or more religious um, than most people my age but amongst my peers you know I, I thought myself as basically pretty normal um, just an average Catholic guy you know a Catholic boy so fast forward to um, 2012 to the year 2012 when there was a mass shooting in a movie theater um, in Aurora, Colorado, you know, uh, 12 people, they lost their lives. You know, I, I was planning to go see that movie that night, you know. I wasn't going to go to that exact theater, um, but, you know, me and my cousin, we, we were considering going to see that movie that night, you know. Um, and for, for whatever reason, we didn't go. Um, it doesn't really matter. But my cousin and I were, you know, we were considering going, but we didn't go. And then, of course, the next day, we heard what happened, right? And it was that it was at that point, you know, when I realized that my life was very fragile, you know, very fragile. And you know, I, I started questioning, like, what if I did go see that movie that night? What if what if that would have happened to me? You know, um, what if I got shot and I got killed and, uh, watching that movie in a theater? You know, and, and the, the thought of that was terrifying, you know. And it really shook me up and I was faced with the reality that, you know, at any moment my life could be taken away from me. And, you know, it was my responsibility to protect my own life, you know. And, and this event opened up my eyes to the dangers and, and the evils that existed in this world. Not, not, not that I didn't know that they existed before, but until now it, it just it hit me right in the face, you know. Like it, it became very real to me, like, like this could actually happen to me, you know. Um, so I was determined on my own to address this issue. So how did I address it? Well, during and before that time period, um, I had been uh, researching firearms and being interested in firearms. And I was actually planning on buying one, not recently, but you know, maybe someday in the future. Because I was interested in them. I thought they were cool. You know, I used them in video games and things like that. So after this movie theater shooting, you know, I decided, you know, Now's the, t now's the time, you know, I was going to go buy me a handgun, I was going to go buy me a shotgun and, and things like this, and, and again, I was going to carry it with me, you know, wherever I went, you know, to defend myself. So, I went to uh, the local gun show here in, here in Denver, and I checked out all kinds of guns, you know, all kinds. And ultimately, I found the one I liked, it was a, it was a compact, uh, like a mid-size uh, 9 millimeter, carried 13 rounds in the magazine and it just it fit my hand like a glove you know I fell in love with it the looks of it the feel of it and uh, and and the controls and everything like that anyway so I filled out the paperwork um, 
uh, got my background check and I walked out of there uh, that day with a pistol. <laughs> it was great. And, uh, and so what was next? You know, I, well, I had to learn uh, how to train with this pistol, you know, because what good was it going to do me if I had this pistol, but I didn't know how to shoot it, right? So that's what I did. You know, I took a concealed carry class and, and I learned from a professional instructor. Um, he took me to the shooting range and taught me how to use it, taught me how to shoot it, taught me how to train with it and get better. Um, I'd, I'd go to the library, I'd get books at the library, I'd watch videos on YouTube, um, anything, any information that I can get my hands on, um, I just soaked it up. I just soaked it up and, and learned as much as I could. And, and eventually, after a while, you know, when I felt confident enough, I went down to the Denver Police Department and I applied for my concealed carry permit, you know, my license so I can carry it legally. Um, I even stopped drinking, no alcohol anymore, and um, no more smoking weed, anything like that, so that I could be a responsible gun owner, you know, so I could, so I can carry responsibly. So now that I was carrying a gun everywhere I went, you know, I figured, well, I had so much more to learn, you know, I, I didn't just want to know the basics, I wanted to become proficient um, with, with not only my knowledge, but my, um, but, uh, of how to use my firearm, but also the laws of the state, you know, so I didn't get in trouble. So I started learning the laws that govern the state and all the rules and, and things like that. And cause you know, I didn't want to get put in jail for, um, carrying my gun, uh, illegally or something like that. Right. So in, in the course of my studies, what I started noticing, um, is what appeared to me to be contradictions in the law like for example you know the, the United States Constitution says um, in, in the Second Amendment the Bill of Rights that we're supposed to have the right to keep and bear arms and that shall not be infringed right but but the but the local laws in Denver here in the, in the city of Denver they require a license <laughs> to carry uh, your weapon concealed and, and and you can't carry certain firearms and certain weapons and it, you know these seem like contradictions to me so it took me down a path where I figured you know I, I I need to learn more about the law because what I was reading it seemed like these laws were contradicting each other so I thought you know maybe I just didn't understand how it all worked you know because I'm not a lawyer so I kept studying um, I bought law books I, I got books at the library um, I'd look up videos on YouTube on, on uh, um, things like I had to pertain with that topic and um, through my research on YouTube, I actually um, found out, you know, people who were standing up against the government and, and things like that. I came, and eventually I came across a man who stood up to the border patrol check at a border patrol checkpoint, um, failure to obey a border patrol uh, border patrol checkpoint agent. Um, the border patrol ended up breaking his window in. Um, and tasing him and pulling him out of his vehicle because he refused to answer the questions. He, he said that, no, this is not what the Constitution says. This is, I have my rights. And anyway, I was shocked to see that because, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. And uh, even according to the law, according, uh, and according to common human decency and morality, right? Like, I couldn't see any justification for what they did to him. But anyway, lo long story short, um, later on, I, I found out that that man was actually a preacher he was actually a pastor of a church nonetheless you know and I was like whoa 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 this is a pastor this is a pastor you know because what kind of pastor does something like this you know because um, being raised Roman Catholic you know a, a priest would never do anything like that you know I was raised that you know you're supposed to be obedient to the government and, and not question them and not stand against their authority and, and I thought that's what godly men did right like I could never picture a priest doing something like that so Anyway, I wanted to learn more about this pastor, right? Because, um, you know, what religion was he, you know, and, and things like that. Because from what I saw, you know, he just stood up for what the law says, right? And, um, and, and the government violated his rights. And, you know, anyway, long story short, I, I found out he had a YouTube channel, you know, where he posted up sermons. You know, his name was, uh, was Pastor Anderson of Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. And you can look him up on YouTube, it's S. Anderson 1611, but anyway, 
Now, I didn't know everything about his religion um, at the time, but I knew he was a pastor of a Baptist church. Um, and I didn't even know what a Baptist was at that time, you know. Come to find out, he's actually the pastor of an independent, fundamental Baptist church that was King James Bible only. And he was preaching a message that I never heard before. Um, he was preaching straight out of the Bible. And what I was hearing from him just made complete sense. You know, it just made complete sense to me. And uh, I wondered why, you know, all these years at the Catholic Church, you know, I had never learned anything anything like this you know it was it was it was so amazing like it was like i heard the truth right you know and and i'm going to tell you a little bit about you know what i learned you know he taught how you know going to heaven is not based on good works you know it's not based on how good a person lives their life or how holy they are things like that you know but it's actually based on your faith in the sacrificial blood <laughs> of jesus christ right and, and as an atonement for our sins. And all, all my life, I was, I was brought up to believe that you had to be a good person to go to heaven, right? You had to follow the commandments to go to heaven. Or, or at least, at the very least, when you, when you committed a sin, you had to, you know, confess that. Or else, you know, you and God were, um, were enemies, you know, and things like that. And so... Um, Pastor Anderson was preaching that... He was breaking it all down for me out of the Bible. You know, he was teaching me verse verse by verse out of the Bible that, you know, the reality that what the Bible teaches is that we're all sinners. You know, uh, Romans 3.23 says, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, and that we all deserve to die and go to hell, you know, because of our sin, because we're sinners. Now, it wasn't hard for me to understand that we were sinners, that I was a sinner. Um, that was very apparent to me and very evident you know I had no problem uh, believing that but but what I struggled uh, with believing was that I deserve to go to hell for my sins you know because I, I never did anything that I thought was really bad in my life like I didn't murder anybody I didn't commit adultery on anybody you know so I, I didn't cause any major damage you know like like what I guess what the Catholic Church calls like um I don't know uh, what do they call it? like a carnal sin or, or something a mortal sin or something but anyways you know, I've, I've stolen things in my life, you know, I, I, um, but I hadn't destroyed anybody's life, you know. And, you know, I, I was sorry for the things that I've done in my life, the sins, but, you know, I didn't plan on doing those things anymore, you know. So, But it was hard to wrap my head around the idea that, you know, I deserve to go to hell. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. I'm a pretty good person, you know. I'm probably slightly above average, you know. But anyway... Because, you know, I thought, you know, God is love, right? Isn't God all love? Isn't Jesus a forgiving God? You know, how could how could God send me to hell for my sins, right? But, you know, he showed me scripture straight out of the Bible. You know, Revelation 21 verse 8 says, um, you know, but, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and, and all liars shall have their part in the, in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, right? And he explained how, you know, not only you're gonna, is your flesh going to physically die, but your spirit, your soul is going gonna, is gonna to be punished and sent to hell for all eternity. Now, you know, there was no denying it. You know, that's what the Bible says, you know. And, and you know, I, have, I may not have been um, all those other things like a murderer and an idolater and an adulterer and, and sorcerer and all that stuff. But I was definitely a liar. You know, it says all liars, you know. And so, you know. I had no choice you know I, I was I was like yeah I'm a liar you know I, I tell lies <laughs> I, I'm definitely a liar you can call me that you know so either the Bible's true or it's not true okay so you know I had to do a little digging um, into the Bible and, and find out well, you know what the do I actually believe this book you know is this book actually legit you know can I put my faith in this book do I really want to base my life on this book so I, I you know I, I learned that through my studies and I'm not going to go through it right now in my testimony but basically I learned through my studies that the King James Bible is is just simply um, the English tra translation of the of the Hebrew and the Greek and the Aramaic manuscripts um, you know those manuscripts that we have that are historically reliable documents you know the most historically reliable documents on planet earth and I'm not going to go into that whole thing but 
you know, so I said, okay, there's really no good reason to reject the Bible. You know, the Bible is very reliable. It's true. I believe it. It's God's word. You know, so if God's real and Jesus did, really did come here and he, he really did die for my sins and, and resurrect from the dead and ascend into heaven and, and, you know, and that whole story, you know, then, then, then the King James Bible is true. You know, it's, it's, it's right in my face. You know, the Bible's telling me that, yeah, I deserve to go to hell for my sins, you know, and I had to accept that because like, that's the truth. So then once, once, once I swallowed that pill, you know, it, it all, it would all was smooth from there, you know, like, so I, you know, I, the question that Pastor Anderson answered is like, well, okay, now that, now that you, you know, you, you're a sinner, you know, you deserve to go to hell, you know, how do you go to heaven? You know, what can, what can, what, what do you have to do? to be saved from hell, you know, because I didn't want to die and go to hell, you know, I wanted to go to heaven, you know, that's the whole point that I was involved in the Catholic Church that in the first place, you know, that's why I got confirmed, because um, I want to go to heaven, I wanted to be with God, you know, I want to be a good person, a righteous person on this earth, so what does the Bible say that I have to go to do to go to heaven, you know, well, Pastor Anderson explained it, you know, he explained how the Bible teaches that Jesus came, he died for our sins on the cross, um, Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us you know so God doesn't want anybody to go to hell you know he explained that God loves us that's why he came and died for our sins and he explained that Jesus you know when he was hanging on the cross he took our sins upon himself you know and not just my sins but the sins of the whole world and when he died he took our punishment, you know, like what we deserve, and he his soul descended into hell for three days and three nights, and and you know that's the punishment that we have, but he took it for us. And three days later, he resurrected from the dead. He conquered death. He conquered hell, and 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 um, he ascended into heaven, and he, he defeated death. Um, and he explained how eternal life is a free gift, right? Um, the Bible says in Romans uh, chapter 3, I think verse 20, uh, verse, or Romans 6, chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So he explained this free gift, you know, that you don't have to do anything to receive a free gift, you know. All you have to do to receive a free gift is, 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 is just accept it. You know, just like when you receive a Christmas present, you don't have to do anything for it. You just accept it. You know, like a child accepts a Christmas gift from his parents. You know, it's just you accept it and you say, thank you. Well, God has a free gift for us. It's called eternal life. We don't have to do anything for it. Um, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to become a Bible scholar, go to Bible college, nothing like that, right? All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ sacrificed for your sins on the cross and, and believe that he died for them, you know? Um, so he explained that, you know, it's, it's not God's will that anybody goes to hell. He wants everybody to accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice and live, and live forever with him as a result. You know, that's the whole point. We're alive is so that we can um, be reunited with our Savior, with our God. And, and, that, and through Jesus, he gives us the opportunity to do that. Um, so, you know, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know, the Holy Spirit enters you and enters you, and you are sealed with everlasting life. Um, and, you know, nobody, nobody can take that away. God can't even take that away because He promised it to you. When He gave you the free gift of eternal life, you only have to receive that one time because once you receive eternal life, it's yours forever. You're never going to die, right? So, even if you continue attending Catholic Church or or 30 years down the road, you say, uh, to hell with you, Jesus, I don't want anything to do with you, or and you go out and kill somebody, whatever, right? Like, it doesn't matter, because he had already promised you eternal life once you received him, once you received him and, and um, received his gift, right? You know, um, Jesus promised that if you accept him, like right here, right now, you have eternal life. If you accept the gift right here, right now, you, you will be born again, You'll be, you'll be his child. You'll be a child of God forever and ever, right? And he will never leave you and never forsake you. You know, that was literally the best news. The best news that I ever heard in my whole life. Um, not only did it not make sense to me, but, you know, I decided that 
if I have any chance of going to heaven and being with God, you know, this was it. This was it, you know, because every other, every other religion that I've studied out there, including the Catholic religion, you know, has taught me that you have to obey these commandments or follow these rules uh, to make it, or, and you have to be a good person of some kind in order to be saved. But, um, but according to the Bible, according to what I learned out of the Bible, is that you don't have to do anything but believe. It's all just your faith. You just put your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, uh, and you believe that Jesus is so gracious and so loving that not only will he forgive your sins, but he's going to give you a free gift of eternal life, you know, that you don't have to do anything at all for, but simply just receive it, you know. And, and it's crazy, you know, some people say, well, so, you, so you're telling me that you don't have to obey the commandments? Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, but it's, it's kind of weird because once I realized that I don't have to be obey the commandments to be saved and go to heaven, that's actually when I started obeying the commandments more because it, it, it was, it was like the chains were broke and, and I felt free and I was like, Oh, so I can freely do this. And, you know, it, it was like, I had a free choice. So now it's like, yeah, I want to choose to do the right thing. Right. Where before it was like, Oh, I thought I was forced to have to do this. Right. Otherwise I won't go to heaven. And, you know, you kind of lower the bar, you lower the standards, right? But anyway, so I was completely shook. I was ecstatic. And, you know, I, I, I can't really sit here and explain everything to you exactly, you know, what I was feeling. Um, but the best way I could describe it is there was like a light bulb that went off on my head. You know, like it was like I had been awakened to the truth. You know, it was like, like I was a new person, like, like the blinders had, had came off. Right, the blinders that came off me, and you know, I remember watching, watching his video, and 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 he was explaining, you know, how we can go to heaven, and I would just watch it over and over and over again, and over and over and over and over again, because you know, the more I watched it, the more it made sense to me, and 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 I remember, you know, I didn't realize how important it was at the time, but but I, I could feel it, you know, I could feel like, oh, this is something that. This is something amazing that I'm learning, right? Like, and it was like um, perhaps the greatest truth that I have ever discovered my whole life, you know. And and it was almost as if I was destined to receive this, right? And and my whole life it was starting to make sense, like the meaning of my life and the purpose of my life it was starting to make sense for the first time in my life, and. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go through the biography of my life. That's not the point of this video. Um, but, you know, it was even explained to me, like, how the government's laws were, were contradictions and why they were contradictions because they weren't given to us from God. Those are man-written man laws. And, and the laws of God, the laws of the Bible, are God's laws. Those are why there's no contradictions in the Bible. That's why the Bible fits together perfectly and it perfectly makes sense because... It's not man. It's not man-made. It's it's from God. It's the word of God. Um. Anyway, um, uh, I remember that my dad. Uh, in uh, well, his sister, my auntie, she had a barbecue, you know, and 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 she invited all of us over. And I remember going to that. I don't. I remember exactly the occasion. Um, but I remember going to my aunt's house. And this is the day before cell phones were really popular. There's no smartphones back then. Um, or they were barely, you know, becoming popular and things like that. So I, I didn't have a cell phone, um, but she had a computer and I, and I asked her, Hey, um, can I use your computer? You know, can I get on the internet? And I remember, uh, my cousins were like, come on, let's, let's go hang out. Let's play. Cause I always used to play with my little, uh, nieces and nephews. Right. Um, but I told them, no, no, I, I got, I got something to do. So I, you know, I went upstairs <clears throat> And um, instead of spending time with my family, like I always do, you know, I'm just watching this video, watching this video, right? Because I knew that it was important that my family get this information, you know. But um, the problem was I didn't, I didn't know how to share it, you know. So I wanted to go upstairs on our computer and I, I remember watching the video and pausing it at each point. And I wrote down on a purple little sticky note every single point, point by point that he was making. And he used the Bible, you know, as a reference, you know. Because I sensed that this was very important information, and I needed to learn it, and memorize it, so I could share it with my family. Um, 
So maybe over the course of the next six months uh, to a year, somewhere in there, um, I just kept watching his sermons online and learning. And I kept watching and watching and learning. And I, and I mean, I would watch like at le- like probably like four hours a day and as much as I possibly could. You know, I was just soaking up all the information as, as much as I possibly Like it was the only thing I was doing. Like I literally dropped everything else in my life and this is all I was doing. And, and eventually the Holy Spirit convicted me um, through his preaching and that I had to find a church. So, I, you know, I found a church. I called up a church. Um, that was literally just one mile from my house, like pfft, one mile, like right there, right? And it was an independent fundamental Baptist church, King James Bible only. Anyways, I called the pastor. I said, hey, listen, I, uh, your church says that you're going soul winning tonight um, or this afternoon. Uh, I'd love to go with you guys. Can I can I be a part of that? And he said, sure, come on. So, you know, I went over. I, I met the, I met um, I met I met the pastor and, you know, we went house to house around the block, around the church, and we passed out flyers, inviting people to church, and I remember meeting the pastor and his wife, and they were very kind, very welcoming, very, very hospitable, like the most hospitable people I never, I ever met, and, and I instantly felt that I was with a kindred spirit, you know, that I felt like I was at home, you know, I felt like I was with my long lost family, right, <clears throat> so I began attending church there um, on Sunday mornings, and you know, and, and I got a feel for what the church was all about. And, and eventually I started attending services three times a week. You know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Faithfully, right? And eventually I decided, hey, you know what? I want to get baptized in this church. I want to, I want to join this church. I want, I want to become a Baptist. And while all that was going on, you know, I made it a point to visit every one of my relatives. Every single one of them. You know, and I shared them with them the gospel that I have learned. The gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, and I told him, you know, it's not about being a good person. You know, it's about your faith in Jesus, your faith in Jesus. And, you know, I I, I hate to say it, but, you know, most of my relatives just flat out rejected the gospel. You know, a few few of them were saved already. Um, But most of my, um, only one of my cousins, I remember, uh, actually accepted the truth and actually accepted what I was um, preaching. Um, But anyway, I, I would invite them to church anyways. And I said, come on, just come down to church one day and check it out. Um, but nobody ever showed up. So anyway, eventually after a while, you know, going to church, I finally scheduled a date to be baptized. And, and um, after I learned what, you know, baptism was and, and all that stuff, I might have attended the church, I don't know, maybe six months, somewhere in there. And, and I said, you know, I'm going to get baptized and join this church. And I invited all my relatives and my friends and my family. And the day finally came around and uh, hardly any of them showed up, you know, because I, I come from a pretty big family and, and only like a few of the very close relatives that I have showed up. And um, it was disheartening to say the least. But uh, anyway, you know, I, I could tell from the service that um, they didn't really understand what was what was happening. Um, either that or they just rejected it altogether. Um, <laughs> they probably thought I was joining a cult or something. Uh, <laughs> but a- anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. Um, but I th- but I think for the most part, they just figured, well, you know, Sean, he's, he's doing something that makes him happy. You know, because after the service, they were all congratulating me. And, and it was kind of awkward because, you know, I don't think they really understood what I was doing. You know, I, um, was I denouncing the Catholic Church um, and changing religions? Or why was I doing that? You know, um, and the fact that nobody really asked me why I was doing it or what I, what exactly are you doing, basically told me that they didn't really understand, you know, and and they didn't re- they didn't really even seem to care, right? Because um, I, I wasn't all doing this because I wanted to per se, um, but rather you know I was doing it because after I learned the truth of the Bible, you know, I was just being obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. I just wanted to be the best Christian that I can be now that I knew uh, the truth of what a Christian really is. So, you know, all this happened around uh, 2012, if my memory serves me correct, somewhere in there, 2012, 2013, 2014. Um, but a- anyway, ever since, you know, ever since then, I attended the, the same church, been going to the same church. And, I, and I, sh- you know, I share with as many people as I possibly can the truth of God's word, that the Bible is God's word and that, all, that it teaches that all we must do to be saved is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. You have to accept the Bible um, and accept 
because that is the word of God. So, you know, if you reject the Bible, you reject God. Um, but anyway, it's the best decision I ever made in my life. And, you know, I don't know how or, or why God chose me or allowed me to receive him this way. Um, but this is the true account of how I became a born again, baptized believer and a Christian um, and a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, the reason that I make these videos now and the reason that my YouTube channel exists is so that I can share the truth of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with the whole world, with you guys. And, you know, Jesus said, go out and teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and, the, and, and of the Holy Ghost. And, you know, so that's what I'm trying to do, you know. Um, so I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to win as many souls um, to Christ as I possibly can because I know that the devil's job out there is to, is to take people's soul to hell. He doesn't want you to believe in Jesus He because he doesn't want you to go to heaven. He wants to drag you down to hell with him. Um, so um, if my YouTube channel can just reach one person out there with the gospel, then all this work will be worth it. And it is work. You know, it takes work. So, um, but yeah, there you have it, friends. Uh, there's, there's my testimony in a nutshell. Um, so I'm going to close with um, the baptismal verse that I used when I got baptized. And I, you know, I chose this verse because um, I knew that uh, the journey ahead of me was going to be long. It was going to be rough. It was going to be tough. Um, it's going to be like swimming upstream. And I, I knew it was going to be a battle fighting for righteousness and truth and and fighting uh, the devil of this world and you know frankly I was kind of ashamed of <laughs> how I, how I uh, lived my life before and um, I wanted to change you know I, I wanted to serve God I wanted to put the past in the past and and just serve God and, and press and press forward um, positively you know I wanted to live live for God and live the righteous path and, and help other people and, and the best thing that I know, and the best advice I, I know to give any of you, you know, to help you is, um, is to get saved. So that when you do die, you go to heaven, you know. I mean, I could feed you and help you in this life, and, and, but it's not going to be as important as saving your soul in the next life. So that's why I do what I do. Um, and, you know, and until I breathe my last breath on this earth, you know, I'm going to continue to serve him as best as I can and, you know, and, and until I lay my crowns one day at his feet in heaven and, and worship him forever and ever in heaven you know with all my brothers and sisters and fellow believers in Christ um, but there you go there's my testimony uh, everything I said was uh, the truth and uh, to the best of my knowledge and uh, I, I didn't say any lies um, so there you have it thank you for listening and I'll see you guys all soon and um, God bless you all have a nice day so, um, uh, the Bible verse that I used um, for my baptism is Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, which reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in God, in Christ Jesus. Amen.